Good morning. Welcome to Natasha Makes. It's Textile Tuesday. Look who's here. It's Helen hey. McCook. Hello. Good to see Fresh you. from uh, the Scottish Highlands. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm travelling around as usual. You have. Busy, busy lady. Mm -hmm. Busy lady. And yeah, yeah. um, what are you bringing us today? I'm bringing you a lovely cruel work panel. So, um, yeah, so cruel with a W, not just really mean and nasty stitching. So um, it refers to the type of wool that we use to embroider with. So okay. Cruel wool. So it's a really lovely type of uh, thread. Let me show you. This is the panel that we're going to be working on today. There you go. And we're going to take a closer look at that in just one minute. Firstly, I've got a couple of things to show you that are uh, that are going live on the website today. Uh, first thing to remind you of is that we have got the between 54 and 56 inch backing fabrics. Yeah, <laughs> super wide. <laughs> Guess what price I've got them for? Tell me. Nine ninety nine uh, per meter. I'll That's be, normally a half meter. I'll be stocking price. up later. Yeah. I'll be stocking up per <laughs> meter. So you know, you need to head down there, NatashaMakes.com. Head there. That's where you can find them. I've got the likes of Kay Facet, Brandon Mabley, Tula Pink, uh, Amy Butler. You've been sourcing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Serious sourcing <laughs> has been occurring, <laughs> along with planes, because some of you went, I just want plain. Absolutely. And that's okay too. So they're all up there and they're all just $9.99. There's also some super, super, super wide, a few of those left, some of the William Morris super, super wide, and I think I've got one Tula super, super wide, which is 108 nice. inches. Oh. That's 270 centimetres. Imagine what you can do Self with that. Salvage, just salvage. It's like, a, yeah, exactly. I mean, just, just huge, 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 huge. Um, so check out the website for those. Um, well, actually, one of the things that you can do with those is make one of these. From half a metre of the super wide, super, super duper wide backing one is my market tote. Very nice. With a little extra handle there. Da, 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 da. And it's got a little pocket so that it packs away to just that. Very handy. I like the little handle so that you can find your purse in the bottom. <laughs> you need that though, don't you? Um, and so those instructions have gone online today. So if you missed that, I demoed that on Hochanda and you can get those instructions because they were my instructions. So you can get those off the website there. Right, let me put those to one side. Other things to remind you of before we get going with Helen. It's like a little housekeeping session just at the start. Good stuff. Um, Liberty strips. It's a nice heavy fabric. Yeah, it's twill. Very nice. We're working on twill too. So Isn't it beautiful? Theme. Yeah, very Isn't nice. it beautiful? Now, um, you can only get this from Liberty if you put in a £500 order. Wow, okay. Yeah. I'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 just, yeah, just. Uh, but I've managed to get hold of strips of it. Uh, so we've got it in the brights which is rather lovely. Mm. Perfect for bag making, I yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, it's the only way that you're going to get hold nice of it. Nice and sturdy as well. Yeah, really is. This is it in your dusk. Nice. I thought that was pretty nice. too. yeah. Yeah. Something for everyone. Yep. Um, and then there's kind of a blue one here, which has almost got... And they are, you're getting mm. a lot of width, so they're about 147 centimetres wide. Yeah. So they're lovely and wide. Nice weight, something a little different, mm. I thought, for you. So I thought I'd bring those to wear. Um, and the other thing that is brand new today, kind of in your mm. honour, I managed to find, <laughs> mm, um, was something that sort of was reminiscent of cruel work to me. Yeah. And you can cut them out. So you get a panel of four. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. Now I've just sashed it in a bit of red and this is from the grunge the, the grunge range um but isn't it pretty oh, hang on let me get that on a on a little close-up for you so you can really see if you mm, that way that way that way i've moved go. the camera so it's thrown me completely <laughs> there we go i thought if you wanted to embroider yeah. over the top yeah but absolutely you could do lots of stitches over there so it's you've got that lovely um kind of floral jardiniere and um, it's very Jacobean style so it looks quite traditional doesn't it and you could do lots of the stitches we're actually demonstrating today you could actually go over the top of that and the lovely thing about having the print is that you could actually 
leave them a bit open so that you can see some of that lovely colour already showing through. Oh, okay. So you don't have to entirely cover it if you didn't want to. There you go. So if you wanted to get the effect of stitching, but maybe not spend as much time stitching. Yes, as you would just do a little highlight. Panel. Yeah, exactly. A bit of there texture on there. So that's it with and that's it with the blue because I thought they've got so many colours to pick mm. out and these were just these were just off the um, the Moda grunge that I had so oh, it's got nice. all sorts of different textures yeah. going through it um, and I just thought that would pick out that now let me show you how the panel comes because it doesn't come already made into a cushion so you could make bags or oh, so whatever you want then, yeah. oh yeah, yeah 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 because this is what you're getting mm. and these are on the website today. So you get two of each design. Oh, Sorry, there we go. Hold that there you go. Yeah, there's go. Two Very of each nice. design. So I mean, it might be that you do a front and the back of a cushion, yeah, and you absolutely. know, and do a zip, absolutely. or you might want to do four different cushions, or you might want to do a bag. No, really nice. And you could do just, different um, different effects with your stitching, so that whilst you've got a set of them they'll feel slightly different from one to another when you've actually in stitched over. You see, this is why I need you to, to explain these sorts of things. Because I looked at it and went, oh, someone who embroidered might love these. You do lots of stuff with these. The other thing is as well, I mean, you could use the cruel threads, but you could also include things like beads, sequins, silk threads, ribbons. So there's lots of things that you could do, even if you did a different technique for stitching on each one, it would feel different again. So Oh, lovely. Yeah, so very different finish to each of them. So There you go. They are on the website um, for, mm, I want to say 12 99 I think that's what we put them up at last, this morning. One last thing, and yes. then we're all yes. about you. <laughs> promise, about promise, you. promise. <laughs> all about you. All about you. And the last thing is... I just Oh, a bit of Morris yeah nice. yeah it's kind of i mean yeah lovely isn't it i've got i've got william morris layer cakes okay so you've got look you've got the two colorways there so you've got the for those of us not plum in one the world, what is a layer cake a layer cake is a 10 inch yes. piece of fabric so you get 42 10 inch squares okay. all pre-cut Oh, let okay. me show you on here and basically see i'm what? learning as well yeah well this is it as isn't a it yeah we, teachers out there will be like what's a layer cake it sounds great but we, <laughs> it's cake, it's got it cake yeah yeah <laughs> if you're hungry it's disappointing yeah. um <laughs> if, if you're on a diet win-win because you get <laughs> fabulous fabric yeah. and it's all pre-cut so your 10 inch square yeah. means that you can cut it into four five inch squares yeah. each piece yeah. so perfect for all of your quilting you get um Absolutely. at least two of each design on that one you get three because you get yeah. 42 pieces mm -hmm. and it's just a fabulous way to yeah. get a taster of every single part of the collection yeah so this is the stand and range this is the latest range that's yeah. your beautiful poppy isn't that stunning it's so nice um so i've got layer cakes and i've also got a 15 piece fat quarter range as well which has got all oh, of nice. these designs in there i'm just flipping through the designs for you oh, there lovely. Uh, and this is his late, I say his latest design, the <laughs> Morris & Co's the latest design. Release. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and these have all been approved by um, the V&A. Beautiful, yeah. So they've got their, their, their approval. There we go, look at that. Isn't that Very stunning? Nice. Isn't it just gorgeous? And so you've got teals in there. And then you've also got these lovely rich oranges and ochres and you've also got the deep blues in there as well but they're all kind of tied together with that kind of blue green yes shape, they are so they'd go really well together with each other wouldn't they so they all mix mm -hmm. and match mm -hmm. uh, an absolute treat and then you've also got the willow yeah. but it's got quite a lot of detail in yeah and then you've got look there's your hairs again mm -hmm. but in that navy and then you've got your willow again and then you've got this lovely poppy, which looks so different. You had that in the cream, oh, yeah. and then you've got it in the navy as well. It looks so different, doesn't it, in that colour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bold. Yeah. So 42 10-inch squares for your layer cake. Yours will not look like that. Yours will be utterly stunning. Pristine and tidy. Absolutely. I will not have been near it. And then I just wanted to show you very quickly, I've also got fat quarters, because this range just sells out. Mm. So a fat quarter size, for those of you that are unsure... It's basically half a metre of fabric Very nice. cut in half. There you go. So that's the amount that you're getting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Like um, and then these are your colourways. 
So again, you've got it, you've got it in that lovely teal mm. as well. All of these. So basically all of the designs that we've just seen in the layer cakes, all 15 of those in fat quarter. The speckling on that lily is so lovely, isn't it? Through all the colours. You so only many yeah. you look at them. It's one of those things. I mean, if I just show this one to the camera here. Oh, no, that's, that's not, not Robin. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, you can just see that detailing yeah. in there. Such a lovely print, isn't it? You only get that mm. with great quality screen printing and yeah. also with great quality cotton. Yeah. It's a really fabulous yeah, quality it cotton. it really holds the colour, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And allows that detail. Yeah. If you didn't have that fineness of cotton, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So that is what we've got for you. Remember also, don't forget, we've got um, all of the backing fabrics as well. Mm. Make the most of those because I can. They should be eighteen ninety nine per per meter, right? And I've got them at nine ninety nine. Um, bargain. Yeah, okay. no, I I can't so keep them at, while they're in. Do you know? Yeah, it's one of those things. I can't keep them at that price for very long. No, because it's just it's crazy. It's Absolutely. crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, but lots of you have been, um, and just be aware it is coming from abroad, so there will be. It might take two weeks to get to you, so Worth just so weight. that you know. At that price, it really is. You can plan your project is. in that time. You can. It's, it's one of those things. We don't have million pound warehouses just yeah. sitting here. You know, it's no. just, Natasha makes us three of us. That's it. So, you know, three we visitors. have to. And visitors <laughs> and friends and yeah, friends. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're at. Yeah, lovely. Over to you. Well, it's a really lovely continuation on from the Morris stuff, actually, because. Um, I kind of thought it fitted. Yeah, really, really good link because, um, in fact, Morris's daughter, May, um, was that who ran his embroidery works actually taught at the place I trained at. Oh, really? And the wools that we're using today, which are the cruel wools, so the, the Appleton's wools, um, these are actually these were actually the company that Morris originally used for his wools. Should we um, have a little closer for those? Yeah, so can you see those? So the Appleton's Cruel range, um, it's a company that was the original company that William Morris used for all his embroideries before he started dyeing his own. He had his own dye works. Oh, wow. Latterly. But um, these, so they're really good. It's a good heritage. And um, one of the things about the cruel work is that because it's a very old traditional technique, we're doing Jacobean inspired yes. but with an arts and crafts flavour for this particular panel. So um, often with Jacobean cruel work, it wasn't symmetrical. So in this one, we've got symmetry with the two birds looking at each other and then the heart shape around. So it's more arts and crafts right. um, feel. So people quite often get confused between what's Jacobean and what's cruel. It's a minefield, isn't it, really? It is, but it's lots of like exciting things, little things to learn, isn't it? So cruel work basically just refers to the cruel wool that you're embroidering with. Right. So we can do lots of things with that, any style that you like, and it's okay. just cruel work. Okay. Um, and the thing to remember is that you want to use a reasonably heavy base, so that's why we're using the linen twill, which is a heritage fabric. So okay. these are... It's um, Scottish linen in, and it's woven in Scotland. Oh, beautiful. Um, so it's a beautiful heritage fabric. So really nice, sturdy, long wearing. So, so this is called Double the Joy. Yes, it is. Double the Joy indeed. So and this is on the website. So www.natashamakes.com. What are they getting in the kit? So in the kit, they get full instructions. So colour plan, stitch plan, stitch diagrams. They get step by step photos. So I've got one here. So you can see the instructions. Um, these are printed this morning off my computer, but the other they're Should actually we pop them, Let's pop them down there. Yeah, so they look. get um, all the instructions. And then if you flip to the step by steps, which are, um, so the stitch diagram is very straightforward oh, okay. uh, to follow, plus um, step by step, so how you see each section building up and you just follow the order. So you basically get nice clear photos, nice big size so that you can- um, They really are. Yeah, quite often with um, kits like this, the thumbnails are quite small, so you don't actually understand, you, you get a flavour of it, but yeah. you kind of have to do a little bit of guesswork. But um, I've made sure that the images are quite sizeable, so you can actually see uh, the stitches themselves and the angle of the stitch. We might have so. been teasing with some of these on Facebook. I like a tease. Yeah, That's good. I don't think that That's Jennifer good. will ever actually forgive her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I want to know everything. I want to know now. I know. I know. We all do, don't we all? Yeah. Really? I mean, yeah. yeah. So you so, get. Um, so you get all the instructions. Right. You get the twill, which is um, 
to the correct size for a panel or for a cushion front, a traditional cushion front. Um, fully drawn up already. So oh, so you don't have to do... No, no. The twill's quite heavy, so I thought it would be better to have it printed already so yeah. that it's ready to go. So that's... And also, people quite often get confused about what's the right side and wrong side with the fabric and what direction the grain should be going in. So the grain should go bottom left to top right. Okay. And so it's already printed for you, so it's good to go, full safe. You get two chenille needles, which are the ones with the bigger eyes, so it's right. easier to thread than a normal cruel needle. Okay. Um, and then you get the full range of threads, so the full colourway basically, um, which is but everything is fab. that you need. So all of your lovely threads are good to go. What, all of these? Yep, absolutely. So they're all good to go, all in, um, all in your order. So ready for stitching. Now the only thing that I do know about cruel work yes. is that if you get proper, proper mm. colours, the, the thread is not an inexpensive thing is it no, they're, they're not, you get what you pay for with exactly. it exactly I mean the idea is basically these uh, wools will your panel will last beyond you your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren it will it's a heritage piece so the idea is if you think about those pieces that you see in um, large stately homes the bed hangings and cushions you see gosh they've la outlasted it's a really, really hard wearing. That's why we're on such a heavy fabric. It was domestic use. Oh my goodness. So, so we're calling the, so you say heritage, I yeah. would say heirloom pieces. Yeah, it's a legacy basically. Yeah. You're stitching something that's going to last way beyond your lifetime, which I think is a lovely thing. And we talk about sustainability and all of these things. So whatever you're making it into, it can be adapted from a cushion into a panel or into something else in future generations, but the embroidery will still all be intact. But it's lovely so, to have, isn't it? My my yeah. grandmother used to do a lot of tapestry, oh, and I've yeah. just taken... She had a, a large one of um, dahlias and roses oh, in a vase, yeah. and uh, and there's light play on the vase. It's really yeah. beautiful. And, um, and I've just taken to get it properly framed. Because yes. it's just... And that's one of the last things I have of hers. That's it. And, and also for you, the fact that she spent so much happy time yeah. engaged with making yeah. this. And it's a beautiful thing to have. And I used to stitch with her on a on a Saturday. Yeah, she'd so probably then thing. you know have to unpick all my stitches because <laughs> I never quite did them in the right direction. But <laughs> I was a child. Give me a break. But it's, it's the start of things, yeah, isn't it? That's absolutely. the thing. It's where the interest kind of is spurred from. And it's that is my overwhelming yeah. memory is spending my Saturdays with my grandma. We'd stitch, we'd knit, we'd do yeah. all sorts of stuff in between piano and dance lessons and this, yeah. that, and the other. Um, you know, my mum would be dropping me and my brother off to various, and we'd always yeah. come back to my grandma's. We had hers as a base. Yeah. And, uh, and eat lemon bonbons in between. But yeah, nice. Nice. What's not to like? Yep, you see? <laughs> I like her already. Sewing and snacks. They go hand oh, in they, hand. They always go hand in yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. about the cake earlier. <laughs> Leia, cake is it eating? Oh, yeah, no, no. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, the idea is that you spend a bit more money on the base fabric and on the, on the piece. But with embroidery, you're spending time as well. So the idea is that... If you did pounds that, per minute spent mm, enjoying this... It's yeah. value for money, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, the fact that you're creating something, and it is very practical, actually. People think of embroidery being very precious. And I'm not suggesting it's not going to be precious for you because you're going to spend a lot of time on it. But um, when it's done, you shouldn't be afraid to put it, make it into a cushion and put it on your sofa and lean against it and have your children sit with their back against it and all the rest of it. And it's it's going to function in your home. So Okay, let's talk yeah. about washing. Is yes. it just sponge down? Um, it depends on what you back it with. So, I mean, okay. in reality, the fabric itself will be marked on with the print, which will be, will be fully washable. The fabric itself is quite hard wearing, responds reasonably well to washing, and the threads are colour fast. What I would suggest is because it's wool, you don't want to make it too hot. Right. So you don't want to potentially so, felt it. Okay. So, yeah, because you'll have taken time to get a lovely range of That's stitches. another look, isn't it? That's another look. I've yeah. done this lovely felted cruel work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a whole, whole new thing. So we might start a trend. But so if you are going to wash it, that's not a problem. But just make sure that whatever you're backing it with is colour fast and uh, is pre-washed already so it's not going to shrink against what you've done. Okay. And then um, your embroidery, just don't agitate it too much. So don't scrub at the surface or, you know, so just common sense really. It's it's as you'd think, you know, it's it's not like it can't be washed. It's not like gold work or anything like okay. that. But so it is very, very practical, easy to function with in normal life. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
Um, you've got some other examples to show yes, us. Yes, I've got lots of exciting things. So, um, so we've got. Um, they're basically Jacobean um, is based on the Tree of Life, right? So, which were from the Indi Indian designs of chintzes and palampores. So you got a palampore. A palampore was a type of printing. It's a hang was often made into a hanging, um, but they always had the exciting Tree of Life design and very exotic animals, birds, flowers, fruit. And, um, and then we created in Britain, because we got so excited about these things, they were very expensive and quite rare um, during the 17, early 1700s. So we basically created a whole embroidery style, which is Jacobean, um, off the back of that. And that's where the arts and crafts style embroidery comes from as well. So, wow. and then we've got, so we've got <gasps> to see the little hillocks at the bottom. Hang on. And then animals. I've got to show you this one because this is just beautiful. <laughs> Look at him. Gosh, there he is. So, yeah. He almost looks mechanical in his I in know, his I kind body. of, unlike most Jacobean pieces, I like the idea of having him as a Jacobean piece. And then I kind of broke his design up a little bit so that... He's got movement and then there's a bit of um He does, yeah, no, he absolutely so does. I, I was just kind of playing with form. I'm just going to lean across you over. You do that, you do that. Do excuse me. <laughs> and then um, this was actually my training piece. This was the first piece of Jacobean that I did. And um, this was when I was an apprentice at the Royal School. So wow. it was hours and hours and hours of putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. So we didn't That's sample at that stunning. point. So what we used to do was to put it in until it was right. Um, well, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. You can That's see almost the like lace textures. work. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. So the idea is that with a good piece of Jacobean or a good piece of crew work, it's basically like the ultimate stitch sampler. So the idea is that you will have a lovely range of really textual stitches against really smooth stitches, heavily worked areas against lightly worked areas. And you can see that range in here. So um, so I thought I'd bring that along so that you could see that. That is exquisite. Hang on, how did you do his wing? That's seeding, so the little dotty bits. A bit like the printing on that lily I was pointing out earlier. Yeah. It's seeding stitches, and we're actually going to do double seeding as one of the stitches in the robin's chest, so I'll demonstrate that. I can't but it wait. looks like little block prints, um, etching marks, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. No, that's amazing. <laughs> really amazing. So, yeah, so brought, brought some goodies. Oh, hang on, so, and just one, one more. Yeah. Uh, so this is mm. kind of part worked at the moment. So it's, but you what can is, see how they're built down, up. It doesn't matter which way. It's just a, a leaf. Quite often with the Jacobean, a le the leaf, for example, or all the motifs, be they became a really good opportunity to play with co color and pattern. So they became quite abstract. So you'd kind of break a larger shape up into smaller shapes so that you can again have more spaces with which to play with the color and play with the pattern. That's so um, so it's lots of lots of different examples of things that you can um, play with stitch as they experiment with them. Wow. So, yeah. So well that's beautiful. Thank you. I'm so, going to see what messages oh, we've got. Having messages? Well I don't know I've got to find it first. <laughs> oh no here we are here we are here we are live let me just click on that. Oh no we don't need to hear we don't need to hear that. Let's turn that down. Um, yeah so if you have got messages or then message in and I will attempt to answer any questions to find or... them. Uh, well, you know. Well, why don't you crack on with some stitching and right, I will yeah. try and find. You'll so if I the internet. There That's you go. Fine. There you go. There you go. Perfect. You're so on. nice and close up. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a few stitches today. So I thought do excuse the ske squeaking as I make it a bit flatter for you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with that stitch that we were just talking about, which is seeding, which gives the effect of a speckle. Now, normally, um, it's quite, um, you do individual ones, but with Jacobean, it's the only technique you ever really see with double, um, double stitches. So it's like a little equal sign. Right. So what we'll do is you have to have them, all the stitches are the same length. They should be even coverage, but then there should be random angles. And for each one you put in, you have a little second one, like a little twin that sits a, a really lovely little refined distance away, like an, e like an equal sign. Okay. So... The thing that people find hardest, actually, is to get the stitches the same length. So once you've chosen on your length... Because it's not like cross-stitch where you, you've got a sort of a guide. No, no. But I think there's no one... Per people worry that there's a perfect stitch position and length and angle. 
There's not. There's a bracket within which it's right. Okay. So if you go monstrously long or monstrously short, you torture yourself by making it minuscule, which is sometimes happens when you're working with magnifiers. They go very tiny, and then you look out of the magnifier, and you're like, oh, that is minuscule. I can't hardly see. <laughs> uh, so working in miniature. Top working of a miniature. Pinhead. Yes. Um, that sometimes happens. But um, as long as it's within a reasonable bracket, then it's correct. And um, so it's a bit like handwriting in that sense. So you kind of find the way that works for you. So and everything will be personal, like uh, absolutely, yeah. Like your your handwriting is absolutely. Christine needs to be careful because she's um she's just had a pan of porridge boil over because she's oh, busy my watching goodness. you. Christine, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't don't don't, ruin don't do the that. Porridge. No. Karen says it's beautiful and inspiring work. Oh, thank yeah. you, Karen. Oh uh, no, you see my nanny Mew's watching this morning. Morning, nanny oh, Mew. Hello. She's found us. Um, she was. She's an avid stitcher. Aww. Absolutely avid stitcher. And uh, Deborah says such beautiful work. Oh, thank yeah. you. So nice. It's lovely to be collecting you stitchers around. And um, and if you're not already a stitcher, then maybe tempting a few of you into a new hobby. So what we're doing, as I say, is just putting them in. And the thing that people quite often find hard about this is actually not the stitching. It's the actual placement of trying to get them. Random. So random is harder than it sounds. Why is random so hard? Yeah, That's the thing, isn't it? Our brains are hardwired for pattern. So, okay. um, so basically we want things in order and repetition. So yeah. if you think about it, if things are in, in order, if one's slightly off, that's where our eye goes to every time. Yes. Because it breaks the pattern of us looking at it. So if it works, we can ignore it. Okay. Pass it on to the next thing because we're happy. So basically random breaks the order of that. So you have to find a way of making that controllable. So the way to make that controllable is if you're don't don't jump about all over the place to try and get it random, uh, which is what most people think. Oh, right. random! I'll just move around the place and it'll work. But you'll end up with them actually kind of aligning, which okay. is difficult. So if you work out from yourself, okay. as long Let's as the that. stitches that you're doing are a different angle to the last two that you've put in, it will look random. So. Hang on, say that again. As long yeah. as... As long as the stitch that you're putting in yeah. is a different angle to the last two that you've just put in. So if you put in that yeah. one there and then you yeah. did that an angle, that an angle. Yeah. And then, so if that was the last yeah. one that you so did... So this is the last one I just put in. So all I need to do is to find a different angle to those last two. That so is a top tip. One. I know. So <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's one of those things that once you realise that, you kind of like... Oh a light bulb goodness. moment. Yeah. How did I find it difficult? Why did you not do that before? So it suddenly becomes controllable, which means we've we've created a, a rule to it, which means it's absolutely achievable. Which means it's a pattern in its own yes. right. Yes. Yeah. I so, see. That's so all clever. The the chaos. I see. So yeah. Okay. So Sheena um, says that she may swoon. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sheena, yeah, make yeah. sure you've got a cushion behind you, preferably an embroidered yeah. one. And she has to admit she still hasn't made her bee. Oh, oh but not yet. Not, not going yet. anywhere. He's waiting for you. That's the thing, though, isn't it? You know, when you see these things, it's yes. best to get them when you see them because you never know. Absolutely. You never know when. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, Helen wants to know why is your hoop wrapped in fabric? Well, my hoop is wrapped in fabric because it helps to maintain the tension. So what you'd normally do is wrap the top because you get two hoops, an inner hoop and an outer hoop. Yeah. Ideally, you'd wrap both of them. So okay. if you use bias binding or a strip of cotton calico um, and just wrap both of them. And then it means that they actually maintain their tension a little bit better. So oh, right. it stops the fabric slipping. And if okay. you've got a soft fabric, it stops it bruising so much as well. Does fabric bruise? Some fabric can bruise, yeah. So you can end up with a bruised ring where you've had your tight hoop. And then <laughs> that's incredibly that's, painful. That's very oh. personal, yes. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. I realised once I'd said it. <laughs> Um, don't fully expect to come out with that in the morning, do you? <laughs> don't bruise your ring, chaps. No, no, be careful. <laughs> so uh, things like velvet absolutely, uh, would, yeah. would, would, would so, bruise. Yes, absolutely. Let's recover from this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Reverse, reverse. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's the reason for having the binding on the hoop. So it's perfectly okay not to bind the hoop, but if you um, want something uh, to just hold, if it's a slippy fabric, then yeah. that will stop it. Plus, if you are going to do stitching and then you're going to leave it for a while and then come back to it, and I don't mean 10 minutes where you have a cup of tea, I mean like a couple of weeks, you just slip your fabric out of the hoop. Okay. Um, because it will hold that form. Um, again, it will Because life happens, the, doesn't yeah, it? these things happen, you know, just step away from it. It will be waiting for you. Just take it out of the hoop 
and then put it back into the hoop when you're ready to start stitching it. Nice. So it's be relaxed about it. So and then with this, what we're going to do is we're going to range through the colours. So probably the easiest thing to do, because human nature means if we're going through four shades, if we're going to go through all of these, so then I've started with the middle one in the centre, and I want to get all the way through to the outside with that. Well, just human nature means that we're going to get carried away with one colour and then just not have room yeah. to get all the way through. So yeah. if you do some of the centre one and then you do some of the outer one, yeah. you know you've got space to speckle through the other two. And you just leave you just leave that just hanging? Yeah, so I mean, normally I'd probably finish all of that because it's only a small area and then I'd finish the thread off. But um, for the sake of argument, I've just left it on the top. And if you are going to come away and start something else because you've maybe got bored or you want to just move up, these, these things happen, just leave it on the top because if you leave it on the back, you'll end up with a nest. And I know we're doing a robin today, but let's not make it. No, the wrong nest. <laughs> yes. Completely wrong nest. Yeah, wrong nest. You don't belong here. So um, How do we start this off? Right. So I start with a knot and two stitches. So it's the waist knot technique. So I've got a knot in the end of my thread. Put it on but, the top. Yep. But they're not... The knot's going to go. We're okay. Keeping the knot, it's not staying. So, um, so basically, up on the line because we know we're going to cover that later on. Two very small stitches on or next to each other. As I say, in that area you're covering up or on yeah. that line because we know we're covering all of those. And then that's enough to secure that thread for the moment. So really? We'll, yeah, absolutely. So we'll snip that knot off, get rid of that, and then that means that we can start stitching as we as we were. Yeah. And then basically it's secure enough to start stitching and then we're going to later on we're going to conceal that line because obviously it's, it's a printed line we don't yeah. want to keep it yeah so it means that it will get concealed and as it gets con concealed it actually becomes more secure again so you will wrap that you, yeah, the, so the we're thread will be wrapped over the top, yeah. okay and um, it means it gets secured in even more and the reason why we do that is because a we don't want lumps and bumps on the back um, and B, we um, knots can do themselves. So yeah. um, in, in wool they can, but slippy threads particularly can really slide off. So you think you've got a nice secure piece of embroidery and it starts to undo itself. So if you start this way, it should be nice and secure. And is there, because you've got your little equal signs yes, next to each yeah. other there, is there any, at any point would you do sort of one in that colour and one in that colour? Yeah, you could as you're merging to through. To really merge. Yeah, if you're really merging through, kind of to get that speckled effect. Yeah, of course. So it's just to, um, you know, if you've got a brain that can't handle an un uneven pair, then don't talk to yourself. But if you ah, feel ah. comfortable with that, then yes, you can. So we've got a small area in which to get through. So yeah, absolutely. Let's let's go for it. So, um, so you'll get a lovely area. As I say, the belly is then um, speckled. So... You can see if I just grab this Ooh. chap here. Sorry. There we go. If I just grab him, so you can see that the the colour all the way through will see, then yes, um, graduate. So you can see the very light all the way through to the very dark. So and you can see the area that we would do the. the so that's where the line on. is. Yes, yes. So I put a stem stitch on afterwards. So generally, oh, okay. where we fill an area decoratively. We put the filling in because we can start and finish on our stick threads on the line. Yeah. And then we can cover that thread up. That we just up look better. at all of these different stitches through here. Oh, right. so Aren't they gorgeous? Lots of texture. So Really gorgeous. And the funny thing is a lot of these stitches are stitches that you'll recognise. So things like uh, Lazy Daisies that you might do in school that we call detached chain stitch. So um, I, look at I know, all the texture. It's so sweet. French knots that people love or hate, it's Marmite stitch French knots. So I'll yeah. have a look at French knots in a minute. Um, so make sure you're doing it right. Things like um, buttonhole. So in this case, we're doing oh, buttonhole yeah, in a, a circular one. manner. So um, you love all the Is that all the fan it? The fan yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. It's a buttonhole and you're making sure you're going down to the same centre each time. So it means that you're getting to see that go round and the eye's a tiny one. So I'm going to show you the eye so that you can see how it works. And you That's leave so a space clever. with this one and this one, you do them next to each other so it's solid. That so, is so there's clever. lots of different options with it, as I say. So, yeah, so circular buttonhole. So I'm just going to leave these bits hanging up here. And these these walls aren't mm. like embroidery threads where you would work with different amounts of strand or anything like that. No, it's not at all. You don't strand them. If they're stranding, you've got an issue. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> again, reverse. Then you did you did not get yours from Helen if they start <laughs> stranding. Yes. Yes. Right. So. Um, so should we look at the buttonhole? So what we're going to do is for the eye, I've started the thread already, I've started over here on this line, come up on the outer edge, go down in the central dot, and we have to keep going down in that central dot. Okay. 
So all I'm going to do is come up in my loop on the outer line, pull the tension to the front and pull the extra thread to the to the back. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to do it again. So go down in that central point. Yep. And then that leaves a loop that I come up in on the edge. So do you thread through that loop? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what holds it in place. Okay. So um, so we can manoeuvre all So you're the kind of round. knotting it each time yeah, you come through. Yeah, it has like a little twist in it. It looks like um, it just holds it in form by coming so up So as here. you come up, you've come up through that Yeah, I've come through up that in loop. that loop. Can you see? Yeah. And it means that you're going to, this, this stitch here is going to hold this one out into position. So it gives there you it that is. lovely, lovely form. That's very clever. And as you travel round, as I say, you're going down to the same hole centrally. It's a bit like the spokes of a bike. Yeah. They go to that central point, but they're obviously, you've got a gap on the outer edge. But you're so coming out, through, so you go in, yeah. down so into that centre, the and hole, then up out. in the edge, in the loop. Oh, very clever. Very clever. Um, Grace says that she's been doing it wrong for years. Oh. Old dog has new tricks. There you go. Always time for a new trick. I Absolutely. Say. Every day's a school day. So that's the exciting thing about it, though. You'll, there's lots of different ways of doing stitches. There's lots of stitches out there. That's one of the things I love. You're never going to know everything. And also the different textures and techniques that you can put together, the combinations, makes it really exciting. It's going to be personal to you. Yeah. It's going to be absolutely stunning. Absolutely. We've got people watching from all over the world this oh, morning. Now. We've got people really? in Scotland, Australia, nice. all over the place. Oh, fantastic. All over Welcome. the place. Welcome. Welcome this morning. Yeah, movie. absolutely. Absolutely. So with these circular buttonholes, how do you actually finish off so that it looks continuous? Well, all you have to do is I've got to my end stitch. And if I'm holding that away, I'm just going to nudge under the outside rim that I started in before. So, so no one's going to know because you so just... it looks like it continues... All Keeps going around. around. Yeah. That's so clever. Because we don't want him to look like he's got a squint. So. <laughs> squinty Robin. A squinty Robin. They may be winking at the other one. He might be. In they are. The joy. They are. They're, they're sort of lovebirds, aren't well, we they? We are heading in into a... spring now. It is the time yeah, to be winking at each other. So, And to finish that thread, you can see I've just done two stitches on the line, brought it to the top and snipped it off. So you snip from the top? Yeah, so basically this kind of comes from if I was working on a large job in a studio, for example, yeah. and there was uh, the full team working on something on one frame, we couldn't all just stop work to be able to flip the frame over to knot off on the back. And as discussed already, knots undo themselves. So basically, if you do this way, you don't have to keep flipping to the back. So everything stays oh, wow. on the surface and it makes everything quicker, smoother, more secure. Forget things like this would have been. You take like the Bayer tapestry, yeah. and how many women would have been involved Absolutely. in stitching something like that? You're Absolutely. so right. Of course they wouldn't have flipped it. Hang on, ladies. Oh, the Just uh, they'd never <laughs> have got anything done. It'd have taken yeah. another hundred years. Well, exactly. So unless you were stitching like you know, like how people row up, two, three, down, two, three, like. You couldn't do it. It'd be like a regimented. I mean, synchronized stitching. I mean, we could do. A, it could be the new. It Olympic could be sport. an Olympic sport. <laughs> yes. Jenna Randall, <laughs> watch out. Yeah. A team, chaps. Oh if you'd like to contact me on that front. But yeah, yeah. Synchronized stitching. I like. I like the idea of that. Oh, hang on, hang on. Imagine <laughs> the hats. Amazing. Imagine the Amazing. flowers you could embroider on the hat. Don't get me started, Natasha. <laughs> oh, that could be a beautiful thing. Just don't get them wet. I like the idea. I mean, I'm sure there's a w where there's a will, there's a way. We could work on that. <laughs> My oh. head, you can imagine, is already going a million miles an hour on this tangent. Yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So next time, I mean, we'll be both wearing swim hats. Marvelous. The little flowers on. <laughs> Ready yourself, people. <laughs> It's worth tuning in for, if nothing else. Just don't bruise your ring while you're doing it. <laughs> oh, <painful. laughs> oh, dear. What we're doing now. I have no idea. <laughs> you never know where it's going. No. Right. Shall we think about fly stitch? Uh, always. <laughs> always thinking about fly stitch. Right. Right, I don't think I've ever heard of a fly stitch. There are so many stitches and it's so exciting. So fly stitch we're going to put into the tail feathers and then we're also going to, so we're going to do them open with gaps in them. And then you can do them close together as well. So we're going to do the beak with exactly the same stitch but close together. So if I just pick this up again, just right. to keep manoeuvring, just changing the decor. Um, so 
if you can have a look, we've got fly stitch which is open in rows down the tail. So okay. you get that lovely effect. And what I've done is I've done the fly stitch in the dark brown and then I've put little straight stitches in the light colour to just oh, give it that Oh, okay. Strip. Yeah. Um, and then in the beak, if I just pick him up, can you see it's exactly the same stitch? Hard to see um, from there, but it's there's no gaps. So basically exactly the same stitch, but, but just to cover the fabric in closer because um, otherwise he'd look like he'd been mauled. So <laughs> that's not the look he's going for. He's, no, he's not, not a winking mauled Robin. <laughs> winking. He's no. been busy. No, winking mauled Robin. Terrible, terrible Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you never know what happens on Boxing. That's like EastEnders. It is, isn't it? <laughs> like they must dread Christmas. Be the worst time. You never know who's going to go, do you? No. But there's always <laughs> someone, isn't there? Absolutely. Gosh, busy absolutely. time of year. Right. So you start from the bottom. We're shaking so, a tail feather. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Always. So, um, so what we're doing is we're starting oh, off we as before. Get you, get you closer. Well, we're just starting off, so you haven't missed anything yet. Bear with, bear with. So. It's having a moment. <laughs> Aren't we all? Absolutely. There you go. Right. So I was just saying, it's um, I'm not worth anything until I've had the second cup of tea. So you know, you just obviously the computer and the camera's the same. Feeling the same. Feeling Roll the same. Roll with it. Yes. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, come up. A little way from the um, from the point in the centre, and then we're going to come out into the point. We s always start with a straight stitch with um, with fly stitch when you're doing things like feathers because we want it to have a point. Um, and then we travel a little way down on the one side. Yeah. Go down opposite on the other straight side. Straight across. Straight across, and that gives you another loop. Okay. So this, oh, oh. Okay. Hang on. So what we're going to do <laughs> hang is on a we're minute. going to come up, basically um, in the end of the straight stitch. Yeah. In the loop, and then we're going to pull in the direction that we're travelling. So it's like a double crazy daisy. Indeed, and and the idea is it's a bit like that, but you've come up and down into separate spaces, so it, yeah. it so it has um, like a V shape, so yeah. it holds the form, and the holding stitch is here. So as I say, it's a really straightforward. So you leave a gap, and then you travel forward again, and across, and directly across, and then you come up in the end of the straight stitch. I could do that. Absolutely. The thing is, the beautiful thing about embroidery is it often looks complex, but once yeah. you've been shown it, you kind of like, oh, is that's that how it happens? How it's, it's like done. magic. So, and you, all you have to remember is the amount that, to maintain your angle, to, you have to make sure that the amount you're travelling down at the side each yeah. time yeah. is the same as the straight stitch that you're putting in. Oh, okay. Because otherwise, if your straight stitch is smaller than the amount that you're travelling down the side, you'll end up losing your angle and it will flatten off. Oh, so no, 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 no. You want so to perk your tail. Exactly. So, um, so whatever you're travelling to move from one stitch to the next, you will allow the same distance for your straight stitch. The whole so time. as you get wider, yeah. you've got to elongate the stitch? Um, not necessarily. No. I mean, what we can do is um, we can just basically maintain that the width of the um, up and down will widen, but um, you can just hold it the same if you want. But if you'd like to have it looking like it varies, then you could you actually um, then you could actually um, change that as well. So what I'd suggest is you've got plenty of thread in the pack, so you could actually have, have a play, a play um, and see what you like the look of. Um, Heather Heather says that she's uh, supposed to be making a Tilda dash hand, <gasps> but she's transfixed. I really great demo. I, I do love dash hands. Do you? Bit of a would quiet that, obsession. Would that be the dog of choice? Uh, yeah, I've been a little bit obsessed with them for a while, and shall, t shall I tell you why? Come on. I haven't thought about this at all. No, 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 of course not. No. I think that their ears flap in a rather joyous way when they run. They have little bat wing ears that go, and they tend to go at the same rate, which I really like. It's very pleasing. And then um, I like the fact that when their little legs go, they're kind of like that. So it's, it's like their body is moving at half the speed their legs are. And also... Their tails You've given us no me. thought, Shh. no thought at all. Shh. Let me out, let me out my obsession. Okay, come on. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, their tail reminds me of the little Fisher Price dogs with the spring with the bobble. <laughs> Emily's got one. Yes. I love them. Yes. And I had one of those, and I think this is where the obsession comes from. And the last point that I love about them, which is common to some other dogs as well, but you notice particularly on short hand dashes, is that their nose looks like a little fruit pasta with the sugar licked off. 
sorry for sharing. No, 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 no. You know, you see, the magic uh, word was mentioned. The <laughs> On, on, a, on a note of ears, mm. Eric, our Great Dane, has what we term naughty ears. Oh. And when they go out, it's, it's a particular angle that they go out when he's up to no good. And you can always say, and it's every time he gives himself away. <laughs> you know how some kids just, yes. they can't, they just can't they, be bad they because they face. just, it's like, whoop, whoop, doing something naughty <laughs> over here. Doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Eric is exactly the same. His ears just sort of go, <laughs> And we're like, Eric, you've got your I naughty like ears that. on. I what like are you up that. to? So it's all about the ear. Bless him. All about the ear. Yeah. He's having a gentle morning on the sofa he right now. Relaxed. Yeah. Re He's just letting everyone. Like a country gentleman. Coming and going. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. I yeah. liked it. But yeah, no, sorry for distracting <laughs> no, no, you. No, from no, no, no. <laughs> um, I'm sure that will be lovely when it's done. Maybe send a photo. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, we want to see. Right, let's see what we're doing. There we go. Right, so you just continue all the way down with this. And as I say, you can, um, because you've got these little gaps, if I just grab a bit of the lightest colour, you can see you just put a straight stitch in. It's, it's a really, excuse the pun, straightforward thing to do. <laughs> um, um, hang on, April would like to know, can you use this knotting method on top with thinner thread? You certainly can, yes. If you're using a thread that's extremely silky and fine, or something like a nylon that has a bit of a texture of, um, say, fishing thread, for mm. example, you'd maybe consider doing three stitches rather okay. than two. Would that be fly fishing then? Oh, you went there. I did. You, you went there. I'm really sorry. I like it. Yeah, I like, it oh, happened. It that, happened. That, this has been a two coffee morning, hasn't it? <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. <Woo! laughs> We're flying. Flying on gas this morning here. Yeah. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, but it's okay because we've put a, a smile on, on Sarah's face. Oh, so Sarah, she says I'm cheers. Glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse. Cheryl's waiting for uh, her hospital transport to arrive. Oh. Yeah. Well. She said, oh my word, that infectious laugh, Natasha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I used to. Um, I used to work for the Royal Shakespeare Company. Oh. And it's um, where the offices are, it's five, five levels. Yes. And um, they always used to know what level I was on <laughs> because <laughs> when the lift stopped, they'd hear my laughter <laughs> on whatever floor I was I on. That. There I are know. worse things you could be known You've for, got right? A laugh. Well, You've yeah, got a laugh. yeah, absolutely. You know? So we're we're fly stitching with a tail feather. Absolutely, absolutely. And all I'm doing now is popping in the gaps. I'm just literally coming up halfway between the stitches that I came up in. So a straight and stitch just to fill. Just popping it in. Yeah, it's just to fill it, but also to get a lovely little flesh, like fleck of colour, uh, change of pace with the with the shade through there. It just makes it look a bit more feathery. So, um, so it just really highlights those gaps. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Now, remember when you get your kit and you can get it online um, at natashamakes.com. Um, just either put in Helen McCook or. Um, Cruel, not as in ouch, that's nasty. Yeah, so um, C R E W E L. Well done, yeah. Boom, got that right, yeah. Knocks it out of the ballpark. Yep. Um, <laughs> just put that in the little search bit and it'll come up. Yeah, definitely. Or Joy and it'll come up. Oh, lovely. I like the fact that I'm being linked to Joy here. Yeah, double, <laughs> double, double, the, double joy. the joy, double the joy. See, I'm actually a twin, so it always used to be known as double trouble, but yeah. With double the joy would have been <laughs> would have been far double better. The joy, I think, I think we could rebrand you <laughs> <laughs> and your twin. <laughs> It's not too late. It's not too late. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking that. I should yeah. have got a marketing team earlier. Yeah, no, I think, yeah. Mark, market this better. You've mar missed a trick. Yeah, Come on, Mum. Definitely. Missed that marketing so. trick. <laughs> um, who else have we got involved this morning? Lots of people watching. Good oh, morning. Hi. Oh, Cheryl's hi. transport's gone. Oh. She had to go. Oh, sorry. You can watch it on your mobile. You can, you can yeah, call us good. back, yeah. Yeah, April says thank you, which oh, is a pleasure. Thank you. Um, Anybody else got any questions? Let me just check. Let me just check. No, we're all good. Right. Oh, right. Okay. Let's go back to close. Let's, there we go. Let's. You can tell. You can tell when I'm thinking about doing something because I go right. Me too. <laughs> I like to or for sign, me, it's okay. Sign so post. <laughs> sign post that I'm going to do something serious. Yes. As serious. As serious as it gets. Okay. Come on then. Ser <laughs> serious. Serious face. Yeah. So okay. Right. So we're going to do trellis. So trellis is basically like a grid. So all we're going to do is come up on one side and go down on the other. 
and beans. Where, 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 right the way across, what? All the way across, enjoy those beans. So, um, wow. Yeah, I know, very liberating. Everyone thinks embroidery is tiny, but there's so many things. You can throw that, that in. Actually, I know, I know. Like to curl yeah, that in. just whew. rebel, rebel with a needle. So <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm using my needle to work out how big my gap is. So oh. I think that's quite a nice gap. Yeah. You can throw a lazy daisy in that space. So all I'm going to do is then I've come up on the original side, which people are at home going, that's a very long thread on the back. That's yes. a waste of thread. But basically what I want to do is I want to continually come up on the same side and go down on the same side so that we, although we are using, we are, we are hedonistic thread wasters. You are, you don't care, do you? I just don't care. But there is a good reason for it. So basically it means that the tension of the stitch is the same each time. So it's actually slightly easier to get a parallel. Whereas if I was coming up here and down here and up here and down here, they'd move very slightly apart where you've got the short stitch. Oh, okay. So, yeah, as I say, don't care, but for good reason. <laughs> no, 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 I'm with so, you. So what we're going to do is you lie the thread parallel and then you're going to go through that thread. Through the middle of it? Yeah, so if you go to the top or bottom, it means that it would move slightly. So okay. if you're happy with it, then just go through it. You're not going to damage it by going through it. Just, just bear with it and smooth it through and you you say you might throw a a lazy daisy in the middle yeah it sounds so like a crazy dance move <laughs> throwing some shapes on that yeah. on that dance Charleston, floor Charleston black bottom yeah. and lazy daisy throw a daisy lazy yeah. daisy in there why not yeah. why not <laughs> So we come up one side, we go across, we decide where we're putting it. We could have a flash mob with our synchronised stitches. <gasps> <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful thing. I, I'm throwing How it How can this there, happen? Along with a couple of lazy daisies. <laughs> Which we could translate into a dance move in our hats. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyone else up for that? Or would it be a flash mob <laughs> of two? Just, a, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that we could involve... Eric. The rest of the team. Oh. Eric. <laughs> Somebody else is dashing. Yes. yes. Oh, my um, friend Gemma's got two. No. Yeah. One's blind. Yeah. So she wouldn't even know what was happening. So that's fine. She'd have no cause for embarrassment for no, the hat then. No, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And then she's got a seeing dash hound for the blind one, for Tilly the blind one. I thought you said a singing dash hound and I was like, Well, they're, they're quite vocal. What? They're quite vocal. <laughs> Hounds are. Yeah, well. That's, have you that's, heard my hound sing? Chatty. No, I haven't. Oh, she's got a voice on her. I didn't believe it. I didn't think. I thought in my in my hound owning novice state, <laughs> having had Danes and yeah. uh, Rhodesian Ridgebacks and yeah, Spaniels yeah, yeah. and da 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 da, I thought, how hard can a hound be, right? Um, I train dogs. I train dogs for film. This will be a breeze. Yeah, can't be that. <laughs> she's the loudest, oh. noisiest, dirtiest, muddiest. Um, most disobedient dog I have ever had. She's fabulous. You, you could have just described me there. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need an otter hound in your life. Not, not, you know, not loud and disobedient. I've got a lot to say. Just, just, you know, many things to express. That's it. Expressive, an, ex an expressive dog. Very yeah. expressive. <laughs> Very glad we don't have neighbours too close. So, yeah, yeah. It sounds like my spirit animal right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. She has opinions, <laughs> quite a few. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I appreciate that. No, I appreciate she's that. She's a good. One. She's a good. One. <laughs> she's the one that's qualified for crafts. Oh. Yeah. First show so out. Cute. Qualified. Amazing. So what we want to do is we want to keep putting these lines in. And okay. You can see I've gone from the centre out. So first of all, the reason. Yeah. Is why for is that, that then? Not by. Not by chance. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. It was considered. So um, if we start in the edge, it's quite often a much smaller area, so it's hard to see the actual stitch set up. So you could so, get locked into doing lots of really... Yeah, exactly. And you so, couldn't throw a lazy yeah, daisy. So, well, exactly. Um, so you need a bit of space for a lazy daisy <laughs> So um, for it to make it spectacular. So um, centre out means that you can have the space to make sure it's set up, your spacing's right and that you're happy with it. Yeah. But also what we tend to do um, is that we tend to not really look at it properly, sit back and look at the piece until we've got to the end of something, either the end of the thread or the end of the shape. So if you start in the middle and go to the edge, you'll then sit back and go, is that right? Because we want the stitches to be parallel. Right. Um, and the spacing to be quite even because otherwise it looks a bit like a dog's dinner. Um, so you Maud, want again. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, by, by starting in the middle and going to the edge, 
you then sit back and look and there's less to reverse stitch or unpick. There's um, mm. quite a lot of psychology in this here. I know, I know. Yeah, well, Embroidery You spend business. a lot of time, ironically, you spend, people think of Stitch as kind of being a little bit like Miss Havisham sitting alone in their house by candlelight. And the fact is it's not like that at all. It's one of those things where we're constantly um, with other people. You know, it was always a very sociable thing. You would stitch in groups. So um, I, I meet a lot of people and you kind of um, see the way that people respond to Stitch. So there is quite a lot of thought behind. But I guess also that's how, how people would have learned because Absolutely. they would have sat with their elders mm -hmm. and learnt and, you know, burned that candle. Absolutely. So it was a really important way of um, passing on knowledge, you know, being, you know, being able to sit with somebody and to be shown particular stitches and the way that different areas stitched as well. So within your community, you'd be shown a particular way of stitching or within your family, you'd be shown a particular way. Another family 30 miles away might be doing exactly the same stitch, but in a different way. So, so it's yeah, it passes on. Yeah, so th th there are some really interesting links with stitch where you look at, um, even with samplers, for example, samplers being used to show um, from generation to generation. And you can see that within this family sampler, traditionally the first one that you see has got a mistake in it. And then you'll see that mistake actually replicated Come through the through. generations. So it's almost like an accent. Yes, yeah. A so, stitchy accent. Yeah, exactly. So it's really, I always think stitches like a language. Yeah. So um, the idea of um, there being stitches from particular areas, you can, you can kind of track where things have come from, how they came to us, how we use them initially, how it's changed today, potentially. There's oh my lots, goodness. There's, lots there's a proper, there's a full on yeah, history, yeah, isn't there? Once you start digging away at it. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm completely obsessed about it. Well, so no, and, and, you, and spreading, spreading the stitchy spreading love. Spreading the stitchy love. So once you've got to one end, yeah. if your thread's in good condition, you've got a fair amount of it, you don't need to finish it off and jump back. So what you can do is use the side to just do a couple of little travelling stitches. Because you're going to be going up that side anyway, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it's going to okay. be held in. So, um, so feel absolutely free to do that. And then come up to where you feel is the correct place and do your threads um, exactly the same way in the other direction. So you'll then so fill this through. whole area. Yeah, so centre out, centre out. And then once you've done all of that, let's pretend I've done all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what we'll do is we'll do them in the opposite direction. So... Um, how, wh how, wh wh why? Because we want to create that grid. So the grid oh, yeah, is got to yeah. So if I pop a, there's no right or wrong to the angle. So if you pop the um, stitch in at the opposite direction, mm. as I say, you'll then create your grid in the opposite um, oh. way. Um, and you basically want to maintain your stitch distance. So right. again, look at um, the original spacing and try and maintain that so that you get an even finish throughout. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah. we're going to decorate these, they need to, um, if some squares are bigger than others, it will look untidy because you'll see more space around. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, no, true. And the thing that people often worry about is that they think that the end of the stitch on the previous row should be the start, so everyone on, every one of them should align. And okay, that's not but not the, case. not the case. No, you're looking at wherever you've decided to throw your first one in, wherever that may be, you're looking at the spacing between the bars rather oh. than the relativity for the previous row. That's so clever. So clever. Yeah. Um, you've distracted my best friend from unpacking. Oh. She's just moved back to Switzerland. Oh, lovely. And, um, Excellent. Yeah, so she's taking a break from unpacking. Well, that is much needed. Because Absolutely. Because unpacking is not interesting. Is, is yeah. dreary. Nobody Absolutely likes Absolutely dreary. But she lives in the most beautiful part of Switzerland. I mean, oh. it's really, really stunning. She lives on a mountain. We're basically at the base of a mountain overlooking a lake. I mean... I feel a stitch retreat coming Absolutely. Up. Come on, Ems. So. Sort it out, love. Um, uh, and uh, Amanda says, morning. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. Gosh, no. Or unpacking. We don't mind boxes. It's fine. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. fine. <laughs> well, this is excellent. Yeah. So, what I thought we'd do is to show you the holding stitches. Because yeah. um, basically, we've now got these very, very long stitches which are not secure. So okay. um, it's really easy to catch these, to pull them. They're like guitar strings. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but what we want to do is to hold them in position. 
and then we can decorate that grid so you can leave the grid as it is or you can choose to decorate it so we're going to decorate Ooh. it with the lazy daisies we're throwing in lazy so, daisies. Yeah. oh emma says uh, all welcome a stitch retreat is real excellent marvelous swiss chocolate and stitching what's <gasps> what's i like uh yeah yes yes excellent. right you're on you're on I feel, I feel, I feel fond of this plan already. <laughs> so. It's amazing how these things happen. Right, let's see what you're doing. Right. So I've just started the thread as before. Okay. So I'm just untied. I'm like Henry VIII with the thread ends. I just throw them around. Well, that's really fine. Nearly. It's going fine. to be like confetti. You have seen the so. floor, haven't you? Like, you know. So, well, you know, you, you've got a quilter's floor. That's fine. It's um, dressmaking quilter's floor. A few thread ends. I've that's broken three hoovers this year so far. What's your record on Hoover's? Well, I say I, it's between me and sometimes um, my babysitter for Emily. Sometimes she decides to, to throw a Hoover around the place. And I think she must literally throw them around the place <laughs> because I'm not going to, I'm not joking. She's, she's killed as many Hoover's as I have. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So nobody enjoys vacuuming. Let's no. Go, just pull my thread out. <laughs> just got so excited. <laughs> the thought just of so it. The excited. thought of it. So that's my I excuse for the out. state of my floor. Oh, and then people enough. come in and say, oh, shall I take my shoes off? <laughs> Please don't, because you'll pick up more rubbish on your like, feet. Like, you scurry, just leaving with furry feet. It's, uh, yeah, it's like that. It's extra insulation. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you, you gain a slipper as you walk along the floor. That's how I like to I think like of it. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And actually, you should have some wooden floors in areas, so then you can just kind of get them to tidy as they walk through. Yeah. No, that's fine. Polish them up. Oh, there's, there, there's brick floor out there. So just feel free to sort of skid. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do these holding stitches. So yeah. basically, we want it to be a little bit like a tent peg. Okay. So it's just... It's not decorative in this case. We're just literally holding it down so that those threads are secured in place. But because it, you're doing it in a different colour, it kind of is. Yes, a little it's bit. just a lovely little flash of a different shade. But it also means that, as I say, you, the thing to be aware of is that you're not um, so close that you're m nudging these out of position. Because we've taken time to make sure they're parallel and sitting nicely. Yeah. If you nudge them out of position because you're oh, no, don't holding do that. stitches there, it's going to create inequity in your pattern, as I say, and we don't want that. So you just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until all of your um, stitches are held in place. So, shall we pretend that I've done all of those? Yeah, Emma says she loves that. She loves embroidery. It's something that she can do. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. So, and we'll um, have to find out what kind of embroidery she likes to do. Well, for when so we go on our stitch retreat. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's out there now in the universe. It's out there. It's out there, and there's chocolate. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean what's not to like actually at the top of the mountain because you can get a cable car up to the top of a mountain just yeah. just around the corner from our house yeah. and they do a lovely hot chocolate could we stitch in the cable car i think you can stitch anywhere I, would be yeah. would be uh, i'm just throwing it out there we I could mean, just go up and down all day couldn't we join the view good light in a cable car very true just just thinking about that good natural light yeah good yeah, natural light good yeah natural light in a cable yeah. car so never mind the view it is quite stunning the view to be fair i'm sure it is if they've got a cable car yeah but, um, there's also um boat trips you can do around the lake oh so nice. you know uh, that takes a few hours so we could stitch on, I, I mean, on the ferry stitching <laughs> well i mean we just have to sit <laughs> and just watch stuff you know no but this is have you seen this thing where people do ironing in outlandish places no because well, it's no. extreme ironing yeah i mean just just bothering seem, to iron is seem, quite extreme i know i don't normally <laughs> so if it, if it doesn't decrease itself i'm certainly not going to bother so um so basically it's these like films of people i think it's for people who can't sleep at night actually um are they sleep sleep ironing in weird <laughs> places is that what's happening? It sounds like a weird fetish. But um, <laughs> it's, it's basically um, it's just this trend of people who are ironing in, in extreme places. So they'll be on the side of a mountain ironing or they'll be, um, you know, I saw one who was How surfing. How did they get their ironing board? I don't know. Or did he use did a surfboard them, as, the, as the ironing board? Maybe takes it with him. But um, one of those <laughs> little foldable ones. You know, travel ironing. <laughs> Better this. <laughs> and then down. <laughs> iron, iron, iron. <laughs> That's, 
Where's Sue Stoney ironing? Someone needs to tell him. He needs to think about what he he's doing. He needs to think about he what he's doing. It. Yes, but anyway, think about what so you've done. Extreme ironing seems to just be stitching, like ironing in a different location. So extreme uh, stitching. Usual, extreme stitching, I feel, has, has feet. Is occurring in Switzerland. Uh, Sue, by the sounds of it, let's have a look. Um, oh, Emma says chocolate fondue, stunning natural light, and the most amazing sunsets um, that are used in Hollywood films. Oh, go on, Em. Actually, try and sell it to us. Emily, <laughs> Is this all you're offering? <laughs> I know. amazing. Oh, and Emma says it's currently snowing. All right, oh. all right. Well, I am a bit like Bambi on snow. It's not... Oh, I'm dreadful. It's not ideal. No, I'm, I'm really, really bad. Not really bad. I, not ideal. No. I get Bambi legs. I've got Bambi legs anyway, but when they... Basically, when um, I was little, my mum, my sister went to dance classes already and I was desperate to go. Right. And I remember... My mom said I was too young to attend, and I remember my mom taking me along and saying, "Look, we'll pay for her to come. She doesn't need to learn anything. She'll stand and twirl around at the back. Just ignore her." Right? <laughs> Basically, can you babysit our child was, and just ignore her for a bit just, while it was she twirls? I was just so determinedly happy twirling around at the back on my own, and also one of the things as well was that I was incredibly clumsy, <laughs> and that lasted a very long time. I mean, every day, I mean, literally every day I used to come out of junior school, my mum would say, where is the plaster today? Oh, no. And one, one week, I actually had to have my head x-rayed twice in a week. Twice in a week? It, but that yeah. was from school? Yes. Oh, that's yeah, okay, because if you, if you have to send them from home, then you start getting on the, on the flag list. Yeah. You don't want that. Well, I was sat in the medical room with an ice pack until my mum came to collect me, at which point she then had to take me to the hospital. I, and the first time, it was all very very much concern and the second time when we're sitting in the hospital waiting she said make it clear to them that you have not been abused <laughs> you did so, not do this um, at home it was a school-based incident yeah we had to fill out freddie <laughs> grazed his face oh. fell, went completely and um, yeah 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 like so, a yeah surfed on the paving yeah. slabs and uh, and we had to fill in the how did you damage your child at home children yeah. don't bounce no they nope. just we yeah we we've got another colour we have yes. well yeah let's have a yes, look at this we're very distracted by the Switzerland and children bouncing well so yeah it's snowing you see <laughs> very good yeah that's how I got distracted yeah so um but yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to throw some lazy daisies in here so popular name is lazy daisy right um technical name is a detached chain stitch so it's a, oh, I prefer an lazy daisy chain stitch I know it's more catchy isn't it yeah so, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up and down into as near to the same hole as possible. Okay, so that just starts it off. Yeah, that gives you another loop. Spot a trend here. Oh, there's Find loops. The loop. Yeah, loop, And then loop. what we're going to do is we're going to come up towards the other end of the, the opposite end of the box that we've created in. The oh, okay, loop, yeah. In the loop and pull. But what we don't want to do is to pull too much. We want it to look like a chain link so you can see the gap in between. Yeah. And then, and then you then go, go down. down on the outside of the chain link and it holds in place and all we're going to do is we're going to rotate through that grid of four around that central holding stitch oh. so that we've got like a north south east west so it creates a flower like a little oh wow florally effect oh that's very lovely that's very lovely um amanda is very practical she would mm. like to know when surfing where do you plug the iron in um I should imagine you'd have a battery pack, but you'd probably kill yourself. Yeah, yeah be careful, be careful. Um, Maybe it was like one of those old-fashioned ones where it's preheated, and they go, and it's just pure white. That's like, really like, dangerous. Extreme. Extreme, <laughs> that's why it's extreme. Uh, and Eileen would just like to say that the only thing she ever irons is her sewing. I think, I think we're with you on that. Me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, she also, she can't tear herself away. Um, Jack, her, her Jack Russell Annie, is crossing her legs. Oh, plaiting her legs as we speak. Yeah. Bless her. Yeah. Poor Annie. But hey, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. So, there we go. Oh, you need a little cat flap. Oh, yeah. An Annie flap. An Annie flap, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone suggested that for Eric, and I was like, yeah, it's called the door. It's like a garage. <laughs> 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 Could you imagine? <laughs> the whole half of the house. <sighs> but I mean, it's just like burglars Great welcome yes. through the enormous gap for the 12 stone Great Dane. I mean, uh, you said just... you could train them. Maybe you could have a keypad. It'd be like that scene out of Big where it's do 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 do. Welcome to my brain, Natasha. 
This is two cups of tea. <laughs> Firing on all cylinders. <laughs> and stitching I mean, at the same time. This retreat is looking you spot on. You did say you were going to train him more. I mean, you, can, you could... It's never too late. Sorts of, all sorts of things. Never too late to teach Who did we? Who tricks. did we teach um, um, new tricks to? New new stitchy tricks to? Who was that? Oh. Oh, hang on, let me scroll. Let me scroll, let me scroll. Who was it? Who was it? Oh, hang on. I've got to go past the chocolate and the fondue. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, it's a chocolate and fondue. Not a chocolate fondue. Although... You know, come on. I'm a, I'm a fan of cheese as well, so this is looking better by the moment. Oh, I've got some fondue cheese in the fridge. Stay for lunch. I may stay for lunch. All right. Uh, Man says, hi, <laughs> when I first anchor my thread, yes. I find my two small anchor stitches are not getting hidden. What could I be doing wrong? Oh, Loving the show. You need to make them a little bit smaller. So the bigger they are, the harder they are to hide. Okay. You only need to go into the next thread of the fabric, or if you're if you've got a lovely sharp needle, which you should have, because you've um, supplied them. Yeah. So, <laughs> absolutely. So these have got a lovely sharp point to them, which means that you can both choose to go up in the hole or down in the hole of the fabric, but also to pierce through the grain of the the fabric itself. So, oh, okay. So it doesn't have to be hole to hole. Or thread to thread, it could you be can up in the hole, down in the thread next to it, and that's sufficient. So it's a really lovely, I'll tiny, teeny, tiny, titchy stitch. Nice. So nice. Yeah. I'm just saying if I've got any other other messages. Oh, what material is being used? Sue. Oh, you missed that bit. That was at the beginning. Yeah. It is Scottish. Yes, it is. It's um, it's a Scottish linen twill. So it's a really beautiful heritage fabric. Same type of fabric they've been using since the 1700s yeah and in fact these are made on looms that are 250 years old wow so um, this is what i love about you helen when you bring a kit like when helen brings a kit it's like a proper kit it's <laughs> like a proper authentic kit with with fabric that is scottish and made on 250 year old looms and the wool um is the sort of wool that william morris's daughter used to to you it, it's you know, it, it's like walking through history with you <laughs> well I with mean, chocolate and fondue oh, there's lots of like about that you know it's sounding excellent gathering people to my textile tribe as we say <laughs> um find your squad and stick to it yes 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 um it's basically the idea is that you know these are heritage stitches you can do anything you like with them design wise color wise you know that's your choice but for me i like to choose materials and threads with purpose mm -hmm. so i don't want something that's going to fall apart in the next five minutes because i'm going well, to no, because this is it. yeah and this yeah. is going to be handed down yeah and the lovely thing about these wools as well is that they won't f if they fade if you keep them if they are being used in in the house if you wash them if you you know keep them in front of a in a very light uh, house with the windows and everything you know of course that's against all the things that we say to do with embroidered yeah, textiles yeah, yeah. you know but you're not going to keep them in a box in the dark are you so oh, please it, don't you, you, you want to no. enjoy them and love yeah them. so um and you know you're creating happy memories for people who you know by recognizing these pieces you know they'll want to have them in their lives yeah. when you when you want here or whatever yeah so the idea is that these wools actually don't fade out of their colour family. They just become slightly softer, more slightly muted versions of oh, themselves. So wow. in 250 years' time, you'll be looking at just a softer version of this, just slightly less vibrant. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So That's really amazing. I know. So you know how it's going to respond. So, so in 2270... Mm. We'll find... People will be... Yeah. You know, they'll have chips in the brain by then messages will come in directly like oh, it's scary <laughs> isn't it but they will still have beautiful cruel work Absolutely. done by you Absolutely. and that's gorgeous you see we have a fire um stand thing yes, that yeah, was done me. by my granny yeah. and then my grandma that was on my dad's side and then yeah. my grandma's um piece that i'm having yeah. and i've had some special glass put in so there's uh, no glare yes, no glare and either it's, it's cost me an arm and an egg yeah. but I want it's I worth want it, it preserved because you you can you can enjoy it from all angles mm. and it tends to be UV protective so it doesn't yeah exactly if it's that going to fade it's not going to fade that much yeah because yeah. it's got the UV being controlled yeah. so yeah oh, lovely excellent, lovely. excellent. um oh Lynn's just tuned in we'll have to watch it all hello, later hello. really love Helen's work Aww, I'm super excited as my you. son bought me a day course at the RSN Hampton Court hey. in a couple of weeks time hey, hey. get in amazing excellent. you'll have a fab time and Julie is watching for the first time on Facebook um, where do I buy these things she says <laughs> um, see down here where it says natashamakes.com you go there www.natashamakes.com um, and you will find all 
manner of wealth of wonderful goodies mm. in there. And if you either search Helen McCook or Joy, um, yeah. <laughs> Or cruel. Or cru cruel. Uh, jo so Joy C sounds better, yeah, isn't it? Does. Uh, C R E W E L. You know, uh, then it's it's all there. It's all yeah. there. Or it, if Josh has been clever about it, I'm then sure he is. yes, <coughs> Josh, just check. It will be underneath where you can watch this live on the website. Wow. If you scroll down, and that's the thing. That's the key to my website. Is keep scrolling. Because um, when you look at the fabric, say if you look for the backing fabrics, yeah. you might think, oh, that's nice. They're like 20 backing fabrics. No, no, no. Keep scrolling. Yeah. There are loads and loads and loads. And you'll get so tempted. Just that's it. going through. You'll suddenly, you'll see all the Textile things temptress. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hashtag. so nice to be your next. You need a jacket with that on the back. It's like the pink ladies. Yeah, like, this is, that is so going to be the thing you know, for our synchronised stitches. <gasps> Are we having embroidered jackets as well? Yes! For our sewing retreat in Switzerland. And hats. Yeah. Perfect. Marvelous. Perfect. Marvelous. You think they go to town on Hindus. They've got nothing on a stitchy retreat. What can I no. say? Synchronised stitching in Switzerland. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Love the alliteration. All the S's. All Absolutely. the S's. Um, this is good. <laughs> We'd love that. Uh, oh, uh, hang on. Yeah. No, we're all good. We're all caught up. Right. Next stitch. Right. Green. I, I, I know. I thought I'd, you know, rock it up a bit. Do it. So, um, I thought we'd do coral stitch because it's one that people get a bit confused about, but it's a lovely knotted stitch. Now, I have two threads in my needle and, um, and it's because the knotted stitches tend to look a little bit spindly. Okay. Um, otherwise, and... I know that some people at home will already be worrying about threading two pieces of wool through the needle. So let's make it easy for you. So and I'm just going to demonstrate. So cut twice the length. So we normally use a fingertip to elbow length, which is called an L or an elm. And um, instead of doing that, what we're going to do is use double the length, so fingertip to shoulder. And then you're going to basically thread one end through, put the two ends together and knot them together okay. and that's your double thread so you are still only threading up one, one end okay before you torture yourself and say like cruel work but not that cruel okay. super cruel super <laughs> cruel um emma says textile temperatures on tour <laughs> i'd like to say it just flows but not when i say it and stumble over it <laughs> on our I like sss it. i like it it's yeah. all good Oh, it's coming together. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're there. We're there. Right. Or there. Here, there, wherever we are. Here, there, wherever. Yeah. You know. That's the good, good thing about embroidery. Extreme embroidery. You can take it anywhere. Anywhere. So, right. So, coral stitch. What we're going to do is I'm going to... We're going to do this line here. I've never heard of all these stitches. Fly know, stitches, coral so stitch. so many. Um, coral sounds a lot more attractive than fly, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll be honest, yeah. So, um, so, what we're going to do is I'm going to lay it forward and to the left... I'm going to go down on the right. Forward, left, down on the right. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Up level with where I went down. Yeah. On the left, in the loop. So in the loop that I created, and I'm going to pull. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, just to help tension, I'm just going to use my needle to help tension that knot. Is that because you've got two layers going through? Yeah, it's got okay. two layers. I want to make sure they're both going at the same rate. Right. And also it just helps to make sure that this part of the stitch is completely tight and not loopy. Uh, so it's just to make sure it sits flat to the So fabric. we don't want loopy stitches. And then we just repeat again. So forward and to the left. Go down on the right. Look at the gap that you're going to have between your knots. And then up on the left, parallel with where you even with where you went down. Yeah. Make sure you're in the loop and pull. So as I say, this is a stitch that people quite often struggle with. But it's such a nice It's looking pull. quite physical. Um yeah. Only because I'm kind of at a funny angle for you guys. Oh yeah, well that <laughs> so too. I'm, I'm yeah. like, hello, hello, <laughs> doing well. I'm very comfortable here. It was so very I'm, comfortable, yeah. I always stitch like this. Yeah, of course so too. Um, of course too. <laughs> do my exercise at the same time. So, yeah, but I mean, normally I'd have it flat, so... Um, it's like it's, stitching yoga. Yeah, so yeah. it is. It's going to get into all sorts of odd positions. Um, so Which is another thing we could do on our stitching <laughs> retreat. Stitching yoga. Saying. I want to do stitching with goats. Of course you do. The pygmy goats. Yeah. Would they not eat it? 
because they are they're, they're quite rascally like I, that. I quite like the idea that they just clamber up on you. They're just kind of like you'll end up with a goat like a neck scarf. They do do goat yoga. I know. This is where my and so oh, oh that's where you, you that's where one, you came from. One of my cousins did it um, in of course America. They did. He did. Yeah. Uh, he did. Uh, I saw the photos and I thought that looks like something I could buy into. Yeah. Um, yeah, yoga with pygmy goats, and as you're lying on the floor or whatever, they kind of just stand on your back and bleat away oh. and look very, very happy. A bit like then, a little massage yeah, exactly, if they trip goons. along. And then, um, and then they basically, they'll kind of, if you're sitting, they'll kind of clamber up. So I just thought, you know, why not? They kind of have legs like mine, so I think they could quite happily just kind of like two at the front and two at the back, you know, just like. Like a rucksack. Yeah. Like a pygmy goat rucksack. Yeah. And then, yeah, you could use them as, as like, weight resistance. I mean, there's a whole workout going on here. You see? You yeah. You see? I like it. Because you know what? Sometimes people quite often don't sit with their frame in the right place. It's too low. So they'll end up kind of rolling towards it. So you're going to need some so, pygmy hooves about yeah, there absolutely. and there to just, so just open you know, everything hey, up I'm, again. I'm feeling good. Yeah. So it's like that. Yeah, I'm going to remember there's a goat, because if I roll f- too far forward, yeah. it's going to slide off. You know I'm a qualified yoga instructor. Are you? My goodness. Just throwing that uh, in at the top of a mountain while stitching with mountain goats. If we could we, I mean, we could, I mean, we could I, change this. I don't yeah. think I'd want a mountain goat on my back. That would really take some weight training. Maybe, maybe could we small. start with the pygmies? Okay, we'll work our way up. We'll work our way up. Yeah. Um, and Deborah would like to say, right, synchronised stitching in Switzerland with embroidered jackets and hats. I'm yeah. in. Where do I sign up? Um, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you that detail. Uh, <laughs> Lorraine says, she's loving this. You're explaining things clearly and having a good laugh. Well, you've got a laugh. <laughs> you've got a laugh. Double, Double the joy. Double the joy. Goats no? in Switzerland. Yeah, Amanda, we're, we're there. We're there with you. Um, and uh, what was the other thing that somebody pointed out? Oh, uh, yeah, that uh, that we would have to also feature Natasha's strippers. I beg you what? <laughs> 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 I'm not sure I'm going to engage with that, but okay. No, 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 no. It's, uh, <laughs> it's all perfectly innocent. Is it? There, yeah, no, there's a, there's a, a ruler grid Yes. called a stripology ruler that I get very excited about because okay. it saves you lots of time and it's safe and it's fa- ab- utterly fabulous. I mean, it sounds great. So yeah, far. yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Um, and it just, it just emerged that there were quite a few other people that also spent time and it became, the verb became that you just <laughs> were stripping. And that, but it's not... <laughs> Not that, because no one wants to see it's that. Like Bridget Jones. But then, it's like, well, that's the thing, is there? I mean, there, no yeah, one needs to see the old Bridget Joneses. <laughs> so the stripology stripping is far safer. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is a bit like um, with different types of uh, textile people. There was a group that called themselves the Hookers, and they were a crochet group. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> So I was it's like, a beautiful you'd rather thing. be known as hookers than the yep. crochet group. Yeah. Uh, I, yep. I thought that was brilliant. A nice little twist. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's all innocent. Yeah. All innocent I, at the top of a mountain. It needs an explanation, but I'm yeah, glad you got there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we got there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, chain, yes. the coral stitch we've just done. So I'm just going to leave that part up and then I'm going to show you chain stitch. And I think we'll probably. After chain stitch, maybe think about leaving it there because we've okay. done a nice selection. So stitches I have never heard of. I Helen. know, I know. Thank so, you. It's so nice to be able to show a little range. And that, as I say, the ultimate stitch sampler, Jacobean and Cruel Work, is the ultimate stitch sampler. You can do anything you like, and you know that's one of the things I like about it. I'm not known for liking the rules. So um, do you know? I, yeah, <laughs> I had Mrs H on yesterday, and she's like a renegade bag maker. <sighs> I love it. We're getting all the rebels here. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll you'll notice a theme theme. going on. Well, this is it. And I think I don't mind a rule as long as there's a reason for it. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say as long as it can be broken. (laughs) Bent a little bit, yeah. No, um, as long as it makes sense and there's a reason for that. I see your rule and I I, I put the hand to it. You know, moustache twiddling. Yeah. (laughs) I must have my monocle out. Um, Anyway, so... Other things to think about, monocles. Anyway, um, like Mr. Peanut, uh, which is also, if I had a dash and I would consider that as oh, a nickname. Would it be mi- 
Just the name, full stop, Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut. So when Freddie was born, we used to call him Mr. Wilson. Oh. Because, <laughs> because what, there the were Prime Minister. Yeah. There was a really grumpy dog in the village, a terrier, yes. a really grumpy terrier called Mr. Wilson. <laughs> so, so whenever Freddie was grumpy yeah. and miserable, we used to say it was his Mr. Wilson <laughs> face. So I'm all for, you know. Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, I feel we've we've worked on life plans today I, I as feel, well. I feel yeah. like we've moved forward so much. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Stitching. What was the stitch we were going to do? Uh, chain stitch. Oh, chain stitch. There we go. Are we doing chain stitch? Yes, we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've done individual chain stitches yeah. known as Lady Daisies. So let me just start my thread off. And, and is this, are we doing the time. leg in a chain yes, stitch? Yes, we're going to look at the leg. So the leg and feet. So um, I just thought it would be nice to ground him a little bit. Maybe just the one leg. <laughs> hopping. We've got a hopping Robin. A, a winking <laughs> Robin. And, and who'd been in the wars. Yeah. What else had he done? Um, Jeanette says, sorry to be late. It's all right. It's not, it's not like school. You're um, not going to get told off. We weren't registered, Jeanette. It's lovely to have you at any point. <laughs> but don't worry. Um, she said the workmen are in doing the bathroom. I they clean it afterwards. Mm. Be nice, wouldn't it? That would be nice. I mm. hope you have that kind of workman. Occasionally, I get the rare, the rare workman that cleans. That, that puts down a dust sheet first. Ha oh. Have they put down a dust sheet? Ask yourself that because yeah. if they have, they're going to tidy up after themselves. Um, but don't let them use your Hoover because that's another way I break Hoovers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a theme. Absolutely yeah. right. So. That was another right. Yes, yes, so, yes. Up and down is the same hole. You'll recognise this from when we did the lazy daisies. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That gives you the loop. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to come up in the loop exactly as we were going to before. Yep. Yeah. And pull in the direction that we're travelling in. Don't pull too much because the sides will collapse in. So just pull Ooh, so that, that you can yeah. see that little gap in the middle. And then go down into the same hole if possible. Certainly within that loop at the top edge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that will give you another loop in which to come up. So if you wanted to have the legs look a bit thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom, what you could do is make your stitches slightly shorter at the bottom and also pull slightly more. So. Oh, okay. You could, so you can adapt them. So if you think, oh, I want. He wants. You I want a bit more thigh I want at the top. Sturdy. You look like a, a rugby playing. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> we're not rude to Six Nations yeah, yeah. now, so... Always done his leg presses. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Bench day. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so what we're going to do is, is do a lovely line of those. And, um, and as I say, if you want to slightly graduate them so they get slightly shorter and slightly uh, more tension as you go towards the bottom, equally, you can keep them the same all the way along. That's absolutely fine as well. I'm so. loving the thought of a chunky thighed robin right now. Um, Karen says that she's just bought the kit. Yay. Hopefully it will be done by Christmas, but she's not committing to which one. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a good thing about that's Christmas. Okay. It keeps coming yeah, around. Yeah, it does. Yep, yep, yep. So. You're all right there. And Christine says that she's so up for Natasha's synchronised stripper stitching. <laughs> <laughs> a thing coming on oh oh and Jeanette says yes the dust sheets are down oh excellent Jeanette that that bodes well that it does bodes well. yeah no no that absolutely so so as with the lazy days that was a quick leg uh, it's like a can can dance so you can <laughs> hardly see it move um, so um <laughs> a hummingbird's wing <laughs> so um I've just gone down at the end to hold it in place and so now I'm going to hop back out yep no problem um and we'll then <laughs> work down his toes so it's exactly the same stitch and you just, just pop tickling them in. his toes as you go exactly so just pop those in as you go so it's all work the leg and toes are all work Absolutely, the same way yeah so the only thing that is slightly different is this little triangle at the top his little breeks which um little what breeks Breeks. His little, yeah, like little breeches. Oh, <laughs> oh chubby thighed, yes. breached Robin. I yeah, mean, this is this is superb. It's welcome to my head. Um, Does he have a name? I mean, that's the next question, obviously. Well, I, I don't know why, but I kind of think of the male one as Percy. I'm, I'm up for Percy. Percy. Yeah. 
it's Maybe very a personable. Penelope for the other one. Penelope and Percy. Yeah, it's quite Does cute. the job. But you can call your Robins whatever you like. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to run all the way from the toe down oh, the centre one. Right. There we go. And um, once we've done that, we then just take the needle down to finish that row, and then you can do the other ones. So because he looks a bit claw-like at the moment. <laughs> Um, so we can just pop the other two toes in quite rapidly. Yeah, Claw isn't a great name for a Robin, is it? I mean, it's he sounds like some kind of baddie superhero <laughs> some, type thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, not ideal. No, it's meet our Robin, Claw. <laughs> I mean, I quite like the subversion of that, you know. <laughs> It's the kind of Robin that will sit on your windowsill and peck angrily until you put some food out for him. They're out there. I know. They are out there. I know. My mum's got them. We used to have one in our old house that um, he used to, if you hadn't put food out for him, every time you went into the garden, he used to make an angry song. Really? And it was like he was telling you that your service wasn't good enough. Oh, gosh. So, um, do you know what? Life, life can be tough at the best of times without having an angry Robin. The, the Robin of judgment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, judgy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow. That, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's not good, is it? I mean, you never know what they're thinking. Did you see that amazing photo? I saw an amazing photo the other day. And it was this lovely little bird singing, and it was on a very, very cold morning. And you could see the actual shape of his breath. It was so cute. Really? Yeah, you could see. It was like you can see song. And it was, yeah. like, it was so cold. And it was obviously mid kind of chirp. And you could see these little bits. They looked a bit like smoke rings. You know, these terrible things that people used to see. Can but birds blow smoke rings then? <laughs> well, I mean, it must... I, because you know, yeah, like when on cold it day and, you, and you get your, you, you can I mean, see your breath. I don't want to sit, think, think of them sitting there like... <laughs> You know, um, having a Hamlet cigar, yeah, I've got, you know, air on a G-string in my ear now. <laughs> 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 One of them's brought along to hum quietly in the background. <laughs> and another one like, that. hey, how are you? No, <laughs> not like that. Mood song. <laughs> you know when the things where people go to sleep to and it's the bird song and it's like, ah. <laughs> 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 Know how we ended up in this place, we I no don't idea. know. But I think it's harmless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway, so but you can actually see it was such a, a sweet thing because if this picture you can actually see the little where his breath has made the little notes, and the oh. notes has a, particular, it has a particular shape to it. That's amazing. I know it was an incredible photo, yeah. So, but no Hamlet's cigar. But not to my knowledge. No, Maybe no, no, hidden no. behind the tail feathers. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Scorching the tail feathers is sweet. Close but no cigar. Absolutely. <laughs> well, this is looking fabulous already. Yeah. So, but you can build, you see it builds in quite quickly actually. And the lovely thing is to say, you have open areas and closed areas. So whilst you're covering quite a large piece of twill, it's like 20 by, 20, 20 inches by 20 inches. That's a good, that's a good, it's a good size. That's a good size. Yeah. You can do something with that, you know. So it's a good traditional cushion size or it's a good size for a panel. Or you could put it into the middle of a quilt or something oh, like wow. that. It would be incredible. Yeah. So, and there's so many lovely colours in there. So... So yeah, you can do all sorts with it. And I think because some of it's open, you know, you can see all the space, the lovely air uh, within that uh, design. It means that you're covering a big area, but actually it covers in quite rapidly. Yeah, yeah. So the range of stitches, some of them are quicker than others, but as you can see, they're not, they're not belaboured, are they? This so. is a beautiful thing. Oh, fabulous, Helen, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank Helen's you. kit. In all its glory and all its form, um, all ready to go is on our website down there, www.natashamakes.com. You can find that there along with a host of other material-based goodies. Excellent. Textile temperatures. Lovely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely need. I'm going with that. You need uh, a thing on the back. Like your embroidered jacket, you know that one with oh, the wings yeah. on? Yeah. yeah. I need something yeah. like that. I keep yeah. considering doing one to go with it that has um, maybe a little devil 
devil tail. Do it. Because of the temptresses. Yeah. This is maybe the thing I've been waiting for. I think I think we've now seen the niche. Psychologically, we, uh, we knew we're there was a place for it. So. We're there. We're there. <laughs> well, we're, we're Switzerland. We're there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where you can buy the kits from. Helen, you are going to come back, I aren't am. you? Yes, I we've am. put dates in the but diary. and exciting things. Everything. I know. I know. Which is wonderful. Yay. So we've got lots planned for you yes. on our Textile Tuesdays. Because that Indeed. will be your day. It will Indeed. be a Tuesday. It will be a Tuesday, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so I'll let you know when the next one of those is coming up. In the meantime, grab your kits and get stitching. Absolutely. Um, and what else do I have to say? I think that's pretty much it, mm. apart from thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank for, you. For coming and, and just... <laughs> Chatting just, away. Just having Talking fun. Talking absolute nonsense. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. Some stitchy facts and other nonsense. And other things. Too. And other Absolutely, things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you ever so much for watching. Remember, check out the website. Have a good rummage around. There's lots of goodies, including the um, backing, the wide backing fabric on there, the 56-inch wide backing fabric. Kay Fassett, Brandon yeah, Mabley, nice. Tula, um, Amy Butler, all on there. Mm. But an amazing price of just 9.99 per meter. Not half meter, per meter. There you go. Yes. Um, I think, is it next? No, not next month. It's a month after. A month after, I think. Yes, that's when Helen will be back. Um, but I will be back next Monday. So take care of yourself. Thank you ever so much for watching and keep an eye on the website for, you know, other little bits and bobs that might pop up in the week. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.